It's an intricate part of so many cultures that cup of coffee, latte, cappuccino, espresso. It's kawa where it was first developed as a drink in the Arabian Peninsula in today's Yemen. Professor Salim Al Hassani of the University of Manchester explains the coffee beans were actually brought to Yemen from Ethiopia. Well, of course, coffee was invented uh, uh, some some very early years of, of, of during Islam. A guy called Khalid in Ethiopia. He was uh, a young man uh, um, looking after sheep. The sheep seemed to like the beans, so the young man took the beans to Yemen. The story goes, and the drink was developed. And there were many other inventions and innovations passed on by the early Muslim world from the seventh century onward. One of them is, of course, the invention of the university. This was done in the year 850 by a young lady called Fatima al Fahri in the city of Fez in Morocco, the first university as we know it in the world, giving degrees and so on. And that's the theme of this exhibit at the London Science Museum. It's called 1001 Inventions, the Muslim Heritage, a bit like 1001 Arabian Nights, the well-known fairy tale. But the exhibit here focuses on scientific or technological inventions and advances that changed our world, from some of the earliest universities to innovations in medicine, hygiene, pumps and water wheels. Forgotten history? Not really. Ask just about anyone on the streets of Cairo or Damascus today and they'll readily tell you about Islam's glory days. Not just its conquests, but its cultural, scientific and technological innovations. These advances came at the height of the Islamic Empire's glory when it spread from the Middle East across North Africa to southern Spain and beyond. During that time, which is about a thousand years, there were enormous contributions in science and technology that comes to us from the other civilizations over a very important civilization, that is the Muslim civilization. Muslims absorbed knowledge from India, China, the Greeks, the ancient Egyptians, and passed it on, a bit like this replica of the elephant clock designed by the Muslim inventor, mathematician, and engineer Al-Jazari in the early 13th century. Anne-Marie Brennan teaches forensic biology at London South Bank University and is fascinated by these innovations. The clock, with its giant Indian elephant and Chinese dragons, is her favorite. Everyone has to love the elephant clock. And I think the elephant clock is wonderful because it's like a United Nations clock. It has all the elements of different civilization. And I like it as a scientist because it shows that science doesn't have to be boring and sterile and plain, that it can be decorative and it can also pay homage to the cultures that bring it forward. And then there's mathematics and algebra. In general, our numbers are known as Arabic numerals today, but it wasn't always so. The numbers that we use today, which is one, two, three, four, they're called Arabic numerals, but actually the Arabs at the time called them the Indian numerals. And the number zero, for example, zifr in Arabic, was used first by early Arab scholars as an integral part of mathematical equations. And that's part of the all-important formula of zeros and ones that was crucial to the development of computers and other new technology. And much like coffee, what would we do without it today? Sonia Pace, VOA News, London.